When you think dino, what's the first thing that comes to mind? If you said Jurassic Park, you can leave. Dinoing is without a doubt the most important thing that exists in the sport of rock climbing. Now, I don't know what the exact definition of a dino is. I could easily look it up right now. But you know, as, a, as an expert in the field of dinoology, I will say it usually means all four limbs come off the wall, but you don't hit the mat afterward. Pretty simple explanation for a dino. You get the idea. You're jumping around on the rock wall. But the question is, who's the best at it? Now, I know a lot of you are probably like, well, it's you, right? You know, like, you know, climbing stuff. You're the best uh, dinoist there is. Surprisingly, that's actually not true. There are a few dinoists out there who are uh, significantly better than me. And there's one person in general who is the greatest dinoist there has ever been. And his name is Tomoa Narasaki. Tomoa Narasaki goes through dinos like six-year-old me went through dino nuggets. They're nothing to him. He just, he hops on, he does the dino, he goes home. Or, well, sometimes he has to climb more after. He doesn't always get to go home right after he sends the dino. But you get the idea, he's really good. So today, we're gonna look at uh, some of his more uh, uh, prolific dinos. I don't know if I used that word correctly, but some of his cooler dinos. He, he does some really cool dinos. We're gonna look at some of them. So this first dino comes from a 2018 World Cup where uh, basically boulder number four was just crazy hard. It wasn't uh, like super dynamic, but it was dynamic enough to throw everybody off the wall. And basically like nobody could even get the zone on this one. Um, and Tomoe Narasaki at this point, he's in like fourth or fifth place. And the only way he stands a chance of winning is to flash this boulder. And you can see the beta, it's like kind of dynamic, like a left arm throw to like a right arm undercling, but it's not like a crazy dynamic boulder. Well, Tomo Narasaki saw this and he said, nuh uh. I just, uh. Whoa! And he goes straight for the zone, skips out the intermediate hold. This is how you know somebody is the greatest dinoist of all time when there's already a dino set at a comp, at a comp for the best climbers in the world, mind you, and he makes it a harder dino. He dinos further than the dino. So this one's fun because not only is it a dino, it's two boulders. One of them's not even a dino. This is the combined world championship in 2019, and the first two boulders, no one topped. Literally nobody got a single top on either of them, except for one man. Tomoa Narasaki. Not only did he flash boulder number one, which didn't even have a dino in it, and you know, that's his strong suit. He just straight up flashed this boulder that nobody else could even get to the top of, and he just easily cruises up it. But then he just absolutely destroys this dino. Let's keep that solid. Maybe able to find a top here. Oh, this is climbing from another planet from Tomoa Narasaki. Needless to say, he absolutely dominated the bouldering in this competition. Like it wasn't even close. And then he also went on to win the entire event by a substantial margin. Like if you look at the scoreboard, it was not even close. And I like to attribute that mostly to his dino prowess. Tomoa Narasaki is the only guy that can dino too hard and over dino a dino. He almost flew off this boulder at a World Cup in 2017 because he dinoed too hard. The way he jumps around on the wall, it looks like he's like weightless. I'm actually curious, how much does he weigh? I feel like he's gotta be pretty light. 128 pounds? He only weighs 128 pounds? Well, no wonder, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'd be that good if I weighed 128 pounds. He has a plus four inch ape index. He has like the optimal build for rock climbing. 128, 57, with a, uh, what is that, like a 5'11 wingspan, and he's got hops. Now this next one's one of my personal favorites. Tomo Narasaki takes a slow, static slab climb and just completely flips it upside down and turns it into the polar opposite, which is a dino. Now if you see the beta here, you can tell that like it's still kind of dynamic, like you have to pop up into that start and then you have to like delicately move over so you can hop over to the side. It's still a, like a dino boulder, but it's very slabby, very balancey, very like keeping up against the wall, being delicate like a flower. And Tomoa just says, fuck that. Nothing to oppose against on the right hand, so there might be some sort of hand flip somewhere. Oh, oh he just skips out the zone altogether, Tomoa Narasaki. <laughs> Pops out left again. The route says, "Well, we're we thinking, what do we have to do?" Tomo Narasaki. Now there is an argument to be made: Is Tomo Narasaki, you know, the best dinoist of all time, or does uh, do the dinos he do just look cool? I would argue that some of it's just style, right? You just got to have that style, and it's not the boulders that have style; it's Tomoa. And if you don't think that Tomoa has style, 
watch this next boulder, and then try to argue with me. Okay, lining it up again. Here he goes. And nice. Again, he goes straight through. I love this clip because even the announcer is getting frustrated with Tomoe because he's just, he's got so much style that, you know, he can't, he can't contain all of it. In third already. And a top. Whoa. Just match it, Tomoe. He's moving so <laughs> fast. It's, it's crazy. But it's not just dinos and it's not just indoor, you know, like sport parkour bouldering that Tomo is good at. You know, a lot of people criticized him for a long time saying like, you know, the indoor is so different and that it's its own thing, which I do think there is some merit to that. But a lot of people are just being really harsh, basically saying that Tomo is great, that he's, you know, able to climb, would drop significantly if he climbed outdoors. So Tomo and Arasaki decided to give these people a chance to be correct by going out and trying some pretty hard outdoor boulders. And one of these boulders was Decided, which is a V14. And, uh, you know, I'm not gonna show you his whole session, all the attempts and all that. I'll just show you Tomo's first attempt. You know, it's a V14, so go easy on him. Um, first attempt on a V14 outdoor boulder from the guy who can't climb outdoors because he's only an indoor dinoist. Imagine being on the crew that went out there with Tomoe to film that and they're like, whatever you need Tomoe, you know, like, we'll be out there all day. It's probably like 6 a.m. They're like, we'll, we'll stay all day, however long it takes. You're my boy, Blue. But all of that would also be in Japanese. They'll be out there like, Anato wa watashi no otokonoko Blue des. I'm fluent in Japanese, man. I didn't practice that at all. Tomoe, if you want to hang out, you know, you got my number. Anato. <laughs> Anata wa watanashi no okoto no makama no to deshu blue. <laughs> now, for those of you that are wondering, like, oh, why is he the 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 king of dinoology? Why is he the the pinnacle of dinos and dinoists? Well, maybe this next clip will give you some insight as to why I've chosen him as the king of dinoology. Samoa, IFC World Championship Boulder Final. Doesn't get a lot bigger than this. Look at that, buzzes across to Murray. He doesn't really seem to, to bump along. He just seems to levitate out sideways and once again got himself in position. And there's the first top of the night and it's Tomoe Narasaki who claims it. Not only did that boulder have two dinos in it, but it also had a pretty tough looking end section and a really tough looking match for the final. And he did the whole thing in 17 seconds. Like who else could do that, right? Like who else do you know? personally, it has to be somebody you know personally, that can dino like that. And I think one of the biggest things about Tomoe Narasaki that makes him the best dinoist of all time isn't just how absurdly good he is at them, or not even just his confidence in dinos. It's the fact that he can just flash dinos that are super complicated. Like, I love a good dino, but flashing a dino is kind of hard because, like, you don't know what the holds feel like, and it's not like, you know, with static climbing, you can reach up and kind of feel it, and you're like, okay, and figure out how you want your grip. With the dino, you just gotta commit, and a lot of times you either miss, the hold doesn't feel the way you thought it did, or you don't fully commit because you're afraid the hold's not gonna feel the way you want, and then you kinda get an idea of how it feels, and you're like, oh, okay. But Tomo and Arasaki will just hop on one of the hardest dinos I've ever seen and send it in one try. Just go back, download the uh, the YouTube video of that, and show them that. That was incredible. And oh, that was incredible for Tomo and Arasaki. Ironically, for how difficult that dino looks, I don't think it's like one of the harder dinos he's ever done. It's just absolutely crazy that he could just read that from the ground and just do it in one try. That was the weakest snap. I have like gel on my hands still. There we go. Next up, we have a World Cup in Innsbruck 2021. This was just a dino that everybody was really struggling with. And uh, at first, I didn't know Tomo Narasaki was actually in this comp because uh, I couldn't find the clip of him doing it because he did it so fast that I couldn't even see the clip. Like when I was scrubbing through, it just kept skipping past him because he gets it like right away. Right, pulling on lower foot position. Oh, wow. it makes it stick and matches as well. <laughs> Turned around right when he stuck it. He did, and he gave the crowd a little wink, a little, oh, not a wink, a little nod. <laughs> it's a 
Simone Arasaki will finish things off in style with a very quick send. And I just love how easily he's able to do the second dino. There's two dinos in this boulder. And granted, the first one's definitely harder. But the second one is still like, I probably couldn't even do that. I mean, I definitely couldn't do that dino, let's be honest. And he just casually jumps on and does it. Yeah, this guy can dino indoors, dino outdoors. You put anything in front of this guy that's remotely related to rock climbing, he's gonna do pretty well. I actually think it would be really cool to see Tomo and Arasaki on like American Ninja Warrior. I feel like he would just absolutely annihilate anything they put in front of him. Cause usually when you see like climbers on like anything like, you know, like, um, Ultimate Beastmaster or American Ninja Warrior, they're always really good at the, you know, the climbing shit, but they're really bad at like any of the power stuff. Like when they got to jump or, you know, you'll see like the warped wall and they're like, oh, they can't really get up the warp wall. Cause I got the little climber spindly legs. But I can guarantee you Tomo would have no issue getting up that warped wall. Tomo probably wouldn't even run up. He would just stand at the bottom and be like, <laughs> He's just from another world. He is, uh, you know, the patron saint of the Church of Dinoology. You know, he's just, he, he's, he's good at dinos. I don't know what else to say. And you know who else is pretty good at dinos? Happy Hippie 69, a new member to the Church of Dinoology who's been slowly increasing his dino game one dino at a time. Thanks for posting your dinos in the subreddit, r slash Church of Dinoology. That's the subreddit. If you got any sick dinos, especially if you got some world records, uh, post them there and we'll watch them next week. I'll see you guys next time.